Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, this is going to be sort of kind of a Bible study called Who's Greek and Who's Hebrew? Now, we're not talking about who is a Greek or who is a Hebrew. No, no, we're talking about uh, Bible dictionaries, what they call lexicons, where they tell you what is the real meaning of those Greek and Hebrew words. Uh, it goes along the lines of, uh, for example, in Isaiah 7.14, it says that uh, a virgin shall conceive. And, of course, in uh, Matthew, it talks about Mary being a, um, a virgin and conceiving and giving birth to Jesus, who is the Christ. But a lot of the modern Bibles will say that the word for virgin in Isaiah is the word Alma, well, that's roughly, you know, going from Hebrew to English. And I may not be pronouncing it properly. And be honest, honestly, Hebrew is a dead language. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, they, you know who's been trying to pass off Yiddish as being Hebrew for many years. And, uh, but I'm not a Hebrew scholar, so what can I tell you? But the thing is, they're going to tell you that Isaiah didn't really mean virgin. It just means a young woman. Well, there was a girl in Peru that gave birth at five years old. Okay. Is that young enough for you to be a miracle? Five years old? Uh, last I checked, she was still living. Uh, she gave birth in, I mean, she was born in 1933. I don't know if she's still alive, but I checked it like a year or two ago, and she was still alive. Um, I don't know. Her getting pregnant was not a miracle, I guarantee you. But that's what they do. They say, well, you know, the King James Bible, it's, you know, it's wrong. Alma really doesn't mean virgin. It just means a young, a young girl. Mary was a young girl, and she got pregnant, you know. So, one's got to be careful when you're studying Greek and Hebrew from these so-called dictionaries or lexicons. One is an absolute standard. It's called the Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew and English Lexicon. So, you had a guy named Brown, a guy named Driver. No, he wasn't uh, in a car. And then Briggs. Now let's take a look at the guy named Briggs. His name was Charles Augustus Briggs. He was born on January 15, 1841, died June 8, 1913. He was an American Presbyterian, but then he was kicked out of the Presbyterian Church, so then he went to the Episcopalian Church. I don't know if you know about the Episcopalian Church, but uh, in the United States, we call them Episcopalians. In England, they would be called the Church of England or Anglicans. Basically, they are Catholic light because the, Epis uh, the Episcopalians and the Anglicans uh, and the Vatican all recognize each other as being, I don't know, heretics maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's too strong a word. There's probably some people in the organization that actually do believe in Christ and are saved. You know, I've been to Baptist churches that says, oh, there's absolutely no people in the Catholic Church saved. I don't know if I believe that. I think there's a lot of people in the Baptist Church that aren't saved. But, uh, yeah. But the thing is, there was a time when the Anglican Church was a very, very had a lot of decent people in it, my opinion, from what I've read from history. But I don't make those decisions. Jesus will. But, uh, you know, switching over from 
he, he was actually kicked out of the Presbyterian Church. He was excommunicated for heresy due to his liberal theology regarding the Bible. So why was he kicked out? Well, he said that errors existed in the original text of the Holy Scriptures. And um, in other words, uh, God failed. You know, God couldn't keep his uh, words right. So, you know, uh, the Bible's wrong from the, from the get-go. From the very beginning, it's wrong. But if, if that's not bad enough, how about this? He also said that the Old Testament predictions of messianic prophecies has not and cannot be fulfilled. Never happened. In other words, Jesus is not the Christ. You know, all those things like the virgin birth and him being born in Bethlehem and all those other little predictions, you know, prophecies, never happened. Uh, and then you're going to listen to this guy and read his Bible words? Oh, well, yeah, the King James Bible word here is wrong, but what Briggs, what it, Briggs says, what it really means is this. Uh, you know, when people start correcting the scholars that did the King James Bible, um, I just turn them off and, you know, go away, rebuke them sharply. That's it. Then there's another guy named uh, Henry Thayer. Thayer was a Unitarian. Unitarians basically believe, uh, well, from what I understand, they don't believe in hell they don't believe that uh, Jesus was God in the flesh, became man. They believe that God, uh, man can become God, but they don't believe that God could become man. First Timothy 3.16, people, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Unitarians do not believe... Uh, The uh, they don't understand the doctrine of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So they believe God is the Father or a mother. Oh yeah, Mother God, Mother, Mother Earth, Mother God. And Jesus was well. He's just he, you know he's just a man. And if Jesus is just a mere man then you don't have a savior. Because if he was just a mere man, born in sin like all of us, corrupted, um, he's not a perfect lamb of God for sacrifice. And we're waiting for another. Unitarians don't believe in original sin. They don't believe the Bible is true. They don't believe it's, uh, they believe it's also an error, just like uh, Briggs. Now, the thing is, if the Bible's wrong, uh, that means you're worshiping, well, maybe you don't worship, I don't know. Maybe they don't worship. But you, they got a God that couldn't even keep his uh, Bible straight. So why would you want to be involved in something like that? You know, if the Bible's wrong. I mean, you know, God can't even preserve his words. What kind of a weak God is that? You know, just the fact that there are so many different versions of the Bible proves to me anyways that... Uh, the Bible, one of them has to be right, and all the others are wrong. And I've had people say, well, you know, King James got errors. Well, if you stay away from Briggs's interpretation and um, Henry Thayer, and then you've got uh, another guy named Kittle, uh, 
The guy that Kittle, there's two Kittles, K I T T E L. Uh, I forget the names of both of them. One of them's named Gerhard. The one that did the Greek New Testament, one of them, did the, they were father and son. One did the Old Testament, the other did the New Testament. The one that did the New Testament was a theologian under Hitler. He was a modern, I mean, I'm sorry, he was an early member of the Nazi party. And I know some people absolutely adore Hitler, but my opinion is if Hitler was doing God's work, Germany would have won. You know, hey, you want to worship Hitler, go for it. I pass. Personally, I think he was one of them. I mean, he did a lot of stupid things that actually lost the war for them. But I think that was God-ordained. You know, Dunkirk, for one. And then he should have set a trap for when the English were going to sink the French fleet at Algeria and in uh, port in France. So, I don't know. But Dunkirk, the war would have just about been over. They let a third of a million men escape. And they didn't have to kill them. They just could have, you know, captured them and, you know, surrendered. I mean, it had been really easy. But he told the army to stop and he told the Air Force to stop. And he gave them three days to uh, evacuate. So, he was one of them. But uh, I agreed with Patton. We should have... Uh, we should have uh, taken out Russia, communist Russia, when we had a chance. But, uh, yeah, and now I think it's going to be communist China. And who do you think, um, who do you think armed communist China? Russia did. So, people just don't get it. But that's okay. They're going to get it soon. And it's not going to be a good thing either. So... When people start correcting the Bible with uh, lexicons, you know, oh, what does this Hebrew word mean? Or what does this Greek word mean? Who wrote the book? I mean, what do they believe? When you read Henry Thayer's definitions, they absolutely reflect his beliefs. You know, Briggs, you know, he doesn't believe in the virgin birth. Oh, it means young woman, you know. Uh, that, you know, the King James Bible people, when they wrote virgin, they were just bragging, you know. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, Mary was born a virgin, you know, was a the virgin birth. That, that's just bragging. All those miracles that Jesus did, that was John bragging about, you know, puffing up Jesus, you know. He was just a man like, you know, like any of us, you know, born the same way and just lived... He just lived a good life, you know, he was a good teacher, but he, you know, there was nothing special about him, really. You know, that's what they kind, that's the kind of stuff that you get when you start looking up these, um, in these lexicons. And this is the kind of stuff that these people believe. And their word definitions reflect this. All you need is a good King James Bible, and the older the better, and then get a Webster's 1828 dictionary. That's all you need. You don't need word definitions. You know? I mean, really. My opinion, anyway. So, all right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, and glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.